Hello, uh, we are here at Tech Party and with me I have uh, Michael Großfeld from Goethe University and Florian Hett from uh, University of Mainz. Welcome, Michael. Welcome. Thanks. Florian. Nice being here Thanks again. Be here. <laughs> you organized a workshop um, which took place recently at Goethe University on digital economics. Tell us a little more about that. Yeah, um, so the, the, the underlying idea or the main motivation to do so was actually already originating right here. So when we're discussing about possibilities to get into exchange and then the, the ultimate uh, Kickstarter to do so was actually me now overtaking a chair on exactly that topic, namely digital economics. And the key starting point for this was to define what this field actually is. And when you try to do so, um, you see that what's very apparent when you talk about digitization in a social perspective then the same thing applies when we talk about it in research and in particular in economics. Namely that it's not just one thing, that digitization is not just one particular issue which we can pin down saying this is what digitization changes, but rather that the characteristic point is that it changes so many things at the same time and each of them being, being disruptive, to, to, to use a commonly used word, and in particular, and then it gets really complex, they also interact. And so one main motivation for me to, um, and also one, one key takeaway from the workshop was to bring together many people with many of, who cover many of these different dimensions to just get a broad idea um, um, interchangeably about what are all these kind of aspects which we have. And um, of course, even, the work, even though the workshop was very broad, it was still not able to cover all these aspects, but at least all the participants, definitely me, got, uh, um, got a better idea about how broad the scope of digitization is. You can give an example? On what I hadn't in mind before? Is yeah. Um, so in some sense, I wasn't really surprised because I coined the program. Mm -hmm. But when I did so and when I browsed to potential people it could talk to, what I found very, what I, what I was, where was, was very, it was in some sense very easy to put together the program because so many people which I, I interacted with in the past, also we were also academics in the past and now moved to different areas. Everybody, when you talk to them about this new position I took on, everybody has a very strong reaction on digitization, but it's almost always a very different one. So you say, so people are moving now in very different, are, are now in very different parts of the economy or even beyond. And um, when you talk about digitization, they all have the gut reaction, yes, this matters for ex what exactly what I'm doing. But as I said, mm -hmm, it's totally mm -hmm. different things. Mm -hmm. And all of them, you agree. When you hear that, you see, oh yes, that's really a big issue. But in comparison, you can say this is the one big issue. And this is, I think, what's nice, very nicely reflecting that this is, this is really a complex thing, which in one sense is a big challenge. On the other hand, of course, it's very exciting, right? Oh, yeah. Because there are so many things to look at. No, that's yeah. true. And of course, on the one hand, you would see that in science, uh, you would think that digital economics or digitization affects things like in education, uh, but also in labor markets or mm -hmm. uh, other domains. But what I what I found really uh, exciting about the workshop was that it was clear that there is actually also the the, the, the two areas, the science and the business, uh, basically the mm -hmm. industry, uh, which is interested in this topic, um, and. For them, probably like what you described, everybody has an even more uh, diverse position mm -hmm. on what this means to himself, right? If you are a scientist, you want to understand things, you have yeah. questions, right? You want to produce evidence, you have puzzles which you want to solve. If you are, uh, let's say, a startup of your firm, you want to make profit, you want to find, I don't know, find a market and then grow or find a product which, people, which consumers like or fill a gap in these things. Um, and what the workshop nicely showed is was that these things are very close to each other actually. It's not that these are different worlds. In mm -hmm. one domain there are different worlds, but in other domains they're very close to each other. Uh, and it just, it's so important to bring these people together from both sides uh, because there's so much to learn from each other, not just by listening, but potentially. But this is what the workshop of course did not want to aim at at this beginning, but my vision would be actually collaborate together, right? Uh, really finding projects where scientists could actually develop tools together with practitioners that would help both sides. So, so how far are we away from, you know, having this real collaboration mm -hmm. uh, on an ongoing basis, right? Mm -hmm. As far as I um, sometimes see, you know, uh, the reactions, it's like, of course we should work uh, with scientists, mm -hmm. we should work with academia, it makes mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, why not use mm -hmm. a scientific perspective, but mm -hmm. then, when it comes to um, executing and uh, doing projects, yes. uh, then very often uh, people get more hesitant. <laughs> yeah? so it's difficult. 
what, what would you say is like uh, um, could be ways to overcome uh, this challenge? Well, there are different things. The one thing, let me go, uh, let me move this aside for the moment. But this is, I think, ultimately the most important problem now is finding each other. Right, uh, but let's move this aside. The other things is then that once you've found each other, let's say once you have a, uh, a company or you have a practitioner, somebody who's really excited about his commercial product or his idea where you want to make money with, um, has found a scientist. Typically, the scientist has completely different questions, right? He doesn't care about making profit. Uh, he typically has a research question which he wants to solve, and it's unclear why they should collaborate, right? So the f I think the most important point is to really find the things which they have in common. And uh, my view on this is that there's one topic which really everybody cares about, both from both sides, and this is understanding things, knowledge, right? So we want to know how things work. For the scientist, because this is part of his, his, his daily job, solving puzzles. But for a practitioner and people in industry, they also need to understand things. How do they work, right? How, what does it mean if I actually have a new platform, or I have a new, uh, let's say, a product which I want to send out to people? How do people react on this? Does it matter if I do it this like this or like that, right? Many things you want to understand where you need data uh, that you need to analyze. Uh, and if we just look at big firms like Google and others, they do this every day, right? They, they, they are so successful because they learn every day. They, they create knowledge every day for themselves. Often they have their own research departments. You as a startup don't have this, of course. And this is, I think, where scientists and, 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 uh, and practitioners could come together to actually um, solve these things. But as you rightly say, it's, it doesn't happen very often. And the most important problem I think you have to solve is really first find your common set of agreement where you think these are the questions that we are both interested in, in answering, right? If I may add to that, I mean, I think, um, so I agree, but I think sometimes it's not so much that the set of, of overlap is limited, mm -hmm. but actually finding out that, uh, so sometimes we are interested in very different things, but very often we are interested in the very same things, however, we talk about it in very different languages. And it's somewhat the same within science when you talk to different fields, oh, sure. right? And it's much more so when you talk to, to practitioners in any kind of way, if it's in the startup scene, if it's the regulators, politicians, um, um, and you typically, and this is why this initial exchange is, I think, such a big burden, because when you, when you quickly talk, you have still a different language. And maybe you talk about the same thing, but you just don't understand mutually that you talk about the same thing. And um, I think that's at least also an experience I had from the workshop, but also from, from previous experiences, that actually you get quite quickly to these points where you see we are interested in the same things. Mm -hmm. We just call them slightly differently. And of course, there are also different angles to it. But um, I think this language issue is a big thing, which, um, which creates barriers that seem to appear to be much more disaligned than they actually are. But this you can only solve if you really start talking to each other. Yes. And uh, if you're willing to actually overcome this first, per, uh, let's yeah. say, obstacle of not understanding each other, if you trust each other, and then say, OK, I'm willing to talk to you and explain what I mean. Right? And for that, you need platforms. Right? You need <laughs> environments. That's why I think Tech Quartier is perfect. It's exactly this, where you have both scientists coming from universities who are in the Rhein-Main area, uh, being it Goethe, being it uh, Mainz, or being it Darmstadt, others who are interested in actually these topics that are here, and you have the firms who come with these issues, this is where we can meet, and where you can uh, basically find out what, that what our language is, yeah. and then and see whether we can actually move things together forward, because I think it's an exciting time. Uh, the data availability that is there, the, the technology that, we, that we're seeing here, gives both sides enormous potential, right? Um, because f f just to give you an example, I do experiments typically in lab environments, right? But the things we want to st study in the end are in natural context. So we need natural context to understand. And so in what, like people in medicine, right? You want to see first, you do trials within a lab or in chemistry, right? But then ultimately you want to stand, or like in physics, you want to shoot something to the moon, you first do it in your lab. But of course, at some point you want to move out and see where does this go? Does it fly or not, right? And the same is, and of course, this is, I think, where the, where the firms come in, because this is their natural habitat, uh, where they actually can benefit from us doing the research. We need to understand whether our little models fly, uh, and they actually see whether they can, money, can make money with it. Also, but also, there are two points. that I, The first one you said, like, platforms are important to get matching. Mm -hmm. And I, this is definitely a, a big argument, right? Just getting to know people is also something with the, with the workshop nicely showed, I think. 
um, um, and also being around here where you see there are many po there would be many possibilities but the second thing is that there are also I think scale economies when mm -hmm, we talk about mm -hmm, mm -hmm. common misunderstandings you know because I think there's all these obstacles of getting in touch with each other I think they are very similar across settings so we could, and, and so in some oh, sense we have a platform where you have this somehow centralized where you can talk about this in a broader audience and just have something like a um, frequently asked questions kind of thing. I think there's a strong overlap in those. And, oh, that's and true. And, and it leads exactly to what you said uh, after that, that um, also understanding better what, is the di what are the different perspectives, because uh, what you just highlighted is that what is, uh, somehow it's always a bit, you might wonder why is the other side interested in mm -hmm. that. And um, I think from our side, it's very obvious. When you talk among researchers, you see that collaborations with practitioners, with companies, with startups, is always, this, these are great settings to do research. This is great data they have. There are great possibilities to do A-B testing. They're, they're, these are the environments we ultimately want to explain, right? We, we both agree that laboratory research is extremely important, but uh, ultimately we want to use it to understand real settings. And if we get access to those, um, this, is, this is basically, our gold mine is for us a land of dreams. Yeah, that's true. But yeah. it's the other. I think the other side can really benefit as well. Right? Because yes, if you are, there was once this. Um, there was a famous advertisement by IBM years ago, uh, where they somehow announced a new server or some I don't know some machine which is really calculating doing things right. And uh, it was about um, planning things right, strategically thinking. So I, it was in German. So I have to say it in German actually, because the advertisement says. Um, it was about really vorausdenken, think about the future, right? But there was a manager saying, well, what does it mean vorausdenken? I don't even have the time for nachdenken, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the point, right? In your daily business, you rarely have the time to think about the issues that are fundamental to the things you want to solve, right? And this is just by the very nature of what your job is, right? You, you do your daily business. The researcher has the time, right? He has a completely different approach. He looks at this, he provides the nachdenken, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, such that the, the business guy can do the Ausdenken and together they both win. I think that's 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 the big advantage. So, I, and, and that's good. I mean, it, it's wonderful that we have this opportunity here in Frankfurt to connect the different dots. And uh, I think if if uh, TechWord here has not only the role of matchmaking, but also maybe educating, providing a mm. framework, a joint or common language to talk about, I think uh, then we can yes. make use of. Uh, these uh, uh, scale economies, right? Exactly. Yeah. You learn from um, each other every exactly. time. And also to add to the, that, the, the, that for both sides is the case. So for example, what learning I had, and maybe you agree mm -hmm. on that, that um, because from a researcher's perspective, given that you see that the data is out there, you also, of course, somehow wonder why is it the case that firms are not maybe using it the way we would, mm -hmm. even though we see mm -hmm. there's a key mm -hmm. opportunity. Mm -hmm. you would, don't, don't you want to find <laughs> out this or that? And this is so far a learning I had is to understand that there are typically organizational frictions to it, exactly yes. what you said. Typically, in particular, if you are a small firm like a startup, you don't have one person who you can just pay to look around and think about things that could be interesting and relevant. And this is, was this was for me a key understanding already now to see that it's not, it's, and it's because it's also definitely not the case that people are just in principle not able to do this on both sides, right? It's just that there's a, there's a, yeah, there's a division of labor, right? And exactly as you said, we are that's our our role in society, that's even true. right? That's and true. somehow this is a, however, this is a. And I think successful yeah. firms use this. They do this. They also use these kinds of opportunities. Are really shocking the system. So I, I've given mm -hmm. also talks at firms where this idea was that le let's shock our system from outside because we were probably right becoming better, right, mm -hmm. in that way. Uh, that's why that's why we are so happy to have like uh, environments like Tech Quartier where these things can happen, right? So now um, you did the first edition. Mm -hmm. Are you planning for the second edition, or what's the plan for 2019? Well, the first plan is to have it here, right? <laughs> <laughs> so yes. um, that, and we, in many ways, I think that is a good thing, right? Because Absolutely. also, what we learned a bit there is also that I think the, the change of environment is something which is also nice. So that now we have basically we, we visit each other. And um, then, yeah, we are currently thinking a lot about in which direction to go. I think one key idea is to make it more focused. So given that this first workshop now was uh, a get-together, getting to know the idea of getting a broad overview, and, and even th uh, though I think this was a, was a big success, the second step should be a bit more focused. And one uh, potential idea would be to really focus on these research collaborations, um, where you say that maybe some of us who did some projects in the past with practitioners, 
just give case studies on how was this. This was also a feature we had in the workshop, right, that I think was very illustrative to see at a particular case what, was, what were the learnings for both sides, what were also pr problems on the way. And on the other way, um, on the other, uh, the other way around, also for us to see interested firms that say, look, this is what we do, this is in principle our setting, right. just get to know each other in a more structured way, more focused on potential collaborations. Wonderful. Thanks a lot and Thank uh, looking very much forward to 2019. Definitely.